can't do this. It's your turn. No, I can't. Get out there. It's your turn. No? Go. Hey, kids, let's do a show. I know a place where we can go. It's in hustling, bustling, downtown St. Paul and the world. Theater is the name of the hall. There's no sweeter little theater that you ever saw. It's on the corner of Exchange and Wabisha. So dust off the seats and scrape off the gum, cause world theater here we come. They didn't care for it. They didn't like it. It's not bad for the first time. You can't expect to knock them dead right away. It takes time. Hey, kid, it isn't that way. You start at the bottom, you got dues to pay. You sweep the floors and you sell popcorn until you're discovered and a star is born. You practice your style, work on your grid, make it big enough to back a dump truck in. And when you get your smile big enough, go out and show your stuff. Why don't you do this number? Oh, don't back out now. Oh, huh? Don't leave now. Uh -uh. Hey, kid, this is your chance. Get a song in your heart. Get the lead out of your pants. Put down that novel. Pick up a drum. Let's see a smile that fills the proscenium. The theater's packed at ten bucks a head. It ain't enough to sing, you gotta knock them dead. The lights are dimming, the curtain parts. Now go out there and win their hearts. Yeah, but you'll need a dance routine. Hey, Red, Red, come over here and show him the soft shoe. Did you get that, kid? Now watch those toes. Light as air and debonair. Watch that smile and that wink. Now here he goes, building to the finish. Oh, that red, he's a hoofer. Wow, what class. I don't think I can do this. Yes, it's your turn now. Huh? Get out there. Hey, folks, there you are. The people who can make this kid a great big star. So please listen and please don't cough. And then please clap until your hands fall off. It sure is wonderful to be here, folks. Though I don't dance and I can't tell jokes. I'm so nervous at a macing flat Cause the world is where it's at Oh yeah, that's better, it's getting better Now this time through, just follow me, kid Hey, kids, let's do a show I know a place where we can go it's in hustling, bustling, downtown St. Paul, and the world theater is the name of the hall. There's no sweeter little theater that you ever saw. It's on the corner of Exchange and so dust off the seats and scrape off the gum Cause World Theater here we come Now it's four steps forward and four steps How back many? Two to the left and two to the right Now shuffle ball, shuffle ball, shuffle ball Change and the shuffle ball What is that? And the bell to the left, and the pirouette, and get in a line, and step, kick, step, kick, step, kick, that's it, kid, higher, higher, smile, here we go, turn, turn, and kneel, hats off! Oh,
let's say just a word here about powder milk biscuits, which brings you this first portion of our show. Biscuits made from the whole wheat raised by the Norwegian bachelor farmers there in the rich bottomlands of the Lake Wobegon River Valley. So you know it's not only good for you, it's also pure, mostly. <laughs> and it does help the shy person to do what needs to be done, not that what needs to be done is to go out and cavort and talk in a loud voice and make a fool of yourself. Shy persons are lovely people, and it's all right for them to be shy. Sometimes you see one off the other end of a room at a party or someplace, and you take a step towards them and they take a step back. <laughs> you look at them and they look down. You try and circle around them from one side and they edge around the other side of the room. They're sort of like wild creatures, <laughs> beautiful wild creatures who we come up over a rise and we see them off there at the edge of the clearings, a fox or a deer or a bear, and we try to approach them and we, we want them to stay there. We want them to trust us, but they don't because, of course, they are of another kingdom and they know what's best for themselves, which is to get out of there as fast as they can. <laughs> well, it may all be true of shy persons, but I just remind you shy persons this, that you really do belong to our kingdom. You really do belong to the kingdom of people. You can go off and live in the country, you can go off and live in the woods, but you know you'll never be as smart as the animals who live out there. All of your wisdom and your intelligence has to do with your fellow human creatures. You belong to us. So pay a little attention to us. Don't run away so fast. And if you need some help, reach for that big blue box with a picture of the biscuit on the cover. <laughs> Heavens, they're tasty and expeditious. Give me some of that biscuit piano there, would you? Well, has your family tried them powder milk? Powder milk. Has your family tried them powder milk? Powder milk. Well, if your family's tried them, oh, you know you've satisfied them. They're the real hot item powder milk. That's crisp. Has your family tried them powder milk? Thank you, Red. Has your family tried them powder milk? Powdered milk. Well, if your family's tried them, you know you've satisfied them. They're the real hot item powder milk. Thank you, boys. Out by the barn today, a load of stuff to throw away. I saw a wooden box I used to know. Among the weeds and the busted jars, rusty parts of daddy's cars, I saw the broken cabinet of our family radio. I turned it over on its back, the glass was full of dirt and cracked where the magic lighted dial used to be. I turned it on and I'd listen hard to the wind in the old barnyard and shed a tear to see it there who been so good to me. Oh, the old radio, the old radio held a place of honor in our home of long ago now the folks are dead and gone i'm getting on sitting all alone with our family radio we used to listen every night the radio our only light we were poor 
we could always close our eyes and see cowboys and sweet guitars funny men and opera stars i remember all those friends who came to visit me oh yes i can see them out in the yard bob and cedric and clellan card slim jim and the vagabond kid lord i do oh i do from a nearby microphone the friendly voice of david stone and the sunset valley barn dance right in your living room and one by one they slipped away and in their place some young dj was playing all those records that were popular that year we used to listen now and then but Never sat so close again Cause he never seemed to feel at home And know that we were here Oh, the old radio The old radio That held a place of honor In our home of long ago Now the folks are dead and gone And I'm getting on Sitting all alone with our family radio mama told us that she knew someday we'd be there too she was right here we are and welcome to our show but as we go out on the air sing to people everywhere i wish she could be listening to our family Radio. This portion of our show is brought to you by Bertha's Kitty Boutique in the Dales for persons who care about cats. And right now for Bertha's, here he is, cat owner and professional interior decorator, Mr. Butch Thompson. Butch? You know, in the decoration business, it's the little touches that make the difference in a room. The pillows, the throw rugs, the lamps, and the vases. And that's why if you're redecorating this fall, and if you don't have cats, or if your current cats don't fit your color scheme, <laughs> I recommend the purchase of a decorator cat from Bertha's. Here's a bedroom I did recently in warm earth tones using natural woods and fibers, and yet the colors just seem to sit there. Until I place this orange cat, Rhonda Fleming, at the head of the bed. And I put this brown tabby, Kent, on top of the dresser. Notice how they just seem to bring the whole room to life. I call them accent cats. And when I shop for them, I always go to Bertha's Kitty Boutique. Bertha's has accent cats in every cat color. And they're elderly cats, so they accent your furniture without destroying it. Thank you, Butch. Bertha's Kitty Boutique. We had a letter from a couple down in Wichita, Kansas, but I enjoyed it because it mentioned the fact they enjoyed Wichita, Kansas because you didn't have to have a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I thought there was an idea for a song in there someplace, so uh, give me some, uh, give me some little lifestyle piano here in uh, any key you want. Darling, let's turn off the tape deck. Let's dump our decor in the lake. These imported chairs never fit me. Beta Max was a mistake. I don't feel good about jogging in these $95 shoes. I'm tired of this mustache, this blow comb. I feel like I'm in TV news. I don't care if the guys down at the factory 
wear Calvin Klein work shirts and pants. My rear end's too big for these fashions, and the house is too small for these plants. Let's drain the water bed, darling, and take back those butcher block boards. Let's cancel our New York subscription and head down to Montgomery Wards. <laughs> Darling, we don't need a lifestyle. The amenities simply won't do. I'm not a quality person. I'm just an old guy who loves you. Give me some piano there. Oh, there it is. Don't have to try all the options Or buy everything that we're sold We can try to be 18 forever But we don't learn to live till we're old I'm going to be 40 next summer With who knows how many to go and if I'm gonna spend them in costume I want it to be my own show Darling, we don't need a lifestyle The amenities simply won't do I'm not a quality type person, nope I'm just an old guy who loves you But we did our best to be modern. We read all the books we could read. We turned our home into a warehouse. But darling, that's not what we need. I'll get the car fixed tomorrow. And you give away all the stuff. Then we'll take our chances in Wichita, Kansas, where being in love is enough. Thank you. That's for the couple down in Wichita, Kansas. Let me take just a minute here to talk just a little bit about your toes. You ever got up in the middle of the night, gone into the kitchen, get a glass of milk, and all of a sudden, wham, you kick the table leg with your bare feet. Oh, oh, that smarts. Let's talk about your knees just a little bit. You ever sit at a desk, and the phone rings, and you turn to answer it, and wham, your knee hits the corner of the desk right there in that soft spot where the nerves are, right underneath it. Almost makes you nauseous. Or your head, do you ever go into a closet looking for your old high school yearbook and you bend down looking through some old cardboard boxes there and you find it, oh boy, you pick up the box and you stand up and your head hits a coat hook right in the middle with the sharp point, right up in the middle where artistic ability is seated. Oh Lord, you drop the box on your foot, you fall to your knees, your knees land on a couple of jacks that are lying there. Makes you so mad you put your fist through the wall. <laughs> Maybe it's time you drop down to the fearmonger shop in the Dales. Pick yourself up a little protective gear. We're talking about little plastic knee pads with the foam cushions. We're talking about steel-toed slippers. <laughs> talking about eight-ounce gloves if you like to punch walls. And talking about protective headgear as well. You'll find it all there at the fearmonger shop. Now, I know a lot of you are saying, I'm not going to wear a helmet around the house. It won't be silly. Well, it's not exactly a helmet. We call it a reinforced toupee. It's kind, of a, <laughs> it's kind of a helmet with hair on it. You'll get used to it and you'll feel better. The fearmonger shop in the Dales, Royandale, Chippendale, Clydesdale, Mondale, Teesdale, and all the other fine shopping centers in your area.
Some people think that love and sex are here one minute, gone the next. It's a race and only younger folks can run. Us older folks just sit and smile. We know it takes us quite a while, but time sure flies when you're having fun. As we get older, we get a little slower, but it just keeps getting better all the time. Us walking down the street, holding hands, they think it's sweet. The poor old things, it's all that they can do. They come to see if we're all right. I can't wait till they say goodnight. I just wanna be alone with you. Arms I gaze on fondly in my arms were to change by tomorrow, fade away. I just turn out the light, my dear, and whisper softly in your ear. What do you say? As we get older, we get a little slower. Uh huh. But it just keeps getting better all the time. Well, I can't wait till I'm 82. I'll get to spend all day with you until the sun goes down and the clock strikes nine. I look at you and give a wink. You'll say, Papa, what you think? Up those well-worn stairs we will climb one more time. As we get older, we get a little slower, but it just keeps getting better all the time. It just keeps. Get better all the time. When I was just your age, I looked at Papa and I wondered how it felt to be so old. Work so hard and come home gray and tired, and worry about the money that you owe. Now we're driving home. I see you dreaming. You aim the old blue Chevy toward the sun. Pull back on the lighter and we're flying. I remember how it felt to be so young. Child, your mama worked so hard to have you. Two long days of labor before you came. I thank the Lord to see that you were living, and I knew my life would never be the same. Think about that night we almost lost you. The doctor stood by helpless and afraid. Your father could do nothing then but want you. But all、oh, the wondrous journey that you made. And now I see you hold the neighbor's baby. Your hands are just as gentle as can be. Some day when you have your own to cradle, I know, my boy, you'll often think of me. Child, when you were born, I was a young man. I thought of all the things I'd never do. Lands I'd never see, but I've forgotten. There's none of it so sweet as having you.
times that I looked down and saw you trembling. To feel your father's anger in the air. Suddenly, it was my papa shouting. And I became the child standing there. And all the times that I carried you upstairs, child. And tucked your grandma's quilt around your head. And kissed you as you lay there sleeping. And each one was a blessing that I said. It's just a song I wrote for you in April. Knowing you'll be eight the first of May. Tell you once again how much I love you And think of you on that amazing day Biking and running outdoors, but I think I'll just go out and lie on my porch. Just give me two pillows and a bottle of Schmidt and a big plate of snacks I can reach where I sit and a book about nature. And please, will someone go get my sunglasses? I don't care for sun. Oh, Mr. Butch Thompson. So I'm gonna go get a pair of sunglasses for him too. To all outdoor persons, I take off my hat. They're young, tan, and trim. I am old, white, and fat. But I love my porch. I could sit here all day, just drinking toasts to the BWCA. Just give me two pillows and a bottle of beer and the twins game on radio next to my ear. Some hark to the voice of the loon or the teal, but I love the voice of Herb Carneal. First tip for the twins, a single to left center for Gary Gaetti. The twins get a man on with two out in the second inning and it'll bring up Pete McCann playing at second base. I think of those joggers out running around. It makes me so tired, I have to lie down. Someday a team of researchers will find that jogging is harmful, it joggles your mind. Give me two pillows and a bottle of Guinness. Please don't come in and say how about tennis? 'Cause I don't like sweating and I don't like to lose. And as long as you're up, would you take off my shoe? Oh, Mr. Dave Moore, playing with his mouth full of cheese and crackers. With two weeks vacation, I sent four brochures 
describing excursions and cruises and tours. They were lovely, full color, and they made quite a stack. And I read them all through lying flat on my back. Just give me two pillows and a bottle of Pabst. I once was a traveler, but my interest lapsed. I went hundreds of miles, the natives to see. They were sitting on porches and laughing at me. Oh, Mr. Greg Brown, playing, lying flat on his back. Oh, the storm should be put on, and that front door needs planing. The window's broken, the roof leaks when it's raining. But life is too short to just work it away. And besides, it don't seem to be raining today. Just give me two pillows and a bottle of low and brow. Please don't come in and say we should be going now. Keep all your schedules, calendars, and your dates. He also serves who just lies here and waits. Seems to be getting a little darker now than it was at the start of the ball game. See the reflection of the lights on the dugout there in that little pool of water. There's a drive hit onto the left center. Field. Well, soon my old porch will be filled up with snow. And one of these days I must get up and go. And put on my coat, pull a cap on my head, put on my warm boots and crawl into bed. Just give me two pillows and a bottle of beer and know that I love you my darling my dear I know we don't go out like other folks do but there's no one I'd rather lie down with than you Services at Lake Wobegon Lutheran at uh, 9.30, Sunday school at 9.30, the worship service at 10.30. Pastor Inkvist will be speaking on winning Christianity um, at Our Lady of Perpetual Responsibility. <laughs> Father Frank from the seminary will be subbing for Father Emil, who is taking his annual vacation. He goes south, takes the same trip, goes and makes a bus tour of Civil War battlefields. And uh, he should be down in Bowling Green, Kentucky, I believe, today, visiting his brother, Father Francis, who is a missionary among the Baptists down there. <laughs> and in the meantime, Father Frank is in the pulpit and will be speaking tomorrow. His sermon is on the back nine of life. Father Frank is kind of an easy priest, and he's an easier confessor than Father Emil is. Father Emil, who sometimes kind of heists himself up in the confessional and says, Oh, you didn't. Oh, shame on you. But we think of the old man down there in Virginia be next week. Father Emil, who thinks of the Christian life as a battle and believes that we are soldiers for Christ and not golfers for Christ, <laughs> sort of thinks of his little flock there in Lake Wobegon, sort of like General Lee's army, poorly supplied, betrayed by conniving politicians back at headquarters, but having brilliant leadership in the field. <laughs> Well, he used to be the greatest auto harpist in the land I was the number one biscuit in the powder milk band I had my own show on the radio But that was a long time ago, kids, that was so long ago People couldn't believe what they heard at home So they came to the show to see me perform And I'd play my harp till the strings would smoke But now I'm just a joke, ah, now I'm just a joke 
Mr. Peter Estrushka was a hot guitar. He challenged me once in a 400 bar, and I played that boy right down to the floor. I don't think I could anymore. No, I doubt that I could anymore. Yeah, the out of heart man is getting old. His hands are stiff and his fingers cold. I told the boys just the other day, I can't go out and play no more. I can't go out and play. Cause I remember how it used to be. People stop on the street just to look at me while they'd stand in line for an autograph. And now they sit and laugh. Oh, now they sit and laugh. At the Belleville and Hoffman guitar shop. Heads would turn and the work would stop. You could hear a pin drop on the floor when I walked through that door. Ah, when I walked through that door. And I'd say, boys, go get your picks. You want to go a couple rounds with this 36. And everybody would turn and run. But there was always one. Oh, there was always one. He was just a kid who'd come to town with his guitar to play me down. But his hands were shaking and his mouth was dry when I looked him in the eye. Oh, I looked him in the eye. Son, I said, you've made a date with defeat, despair, and bitter fate. Lord, have mercy on a judgment day. And now get up and play, kid. Now get up and play. Well, the notes rang out and the kid fell back. He lay on the floor by the guitar rack. I knelt by his side and I held his head. Before he died, he said these words. Before he died, he said, Tell my mother that I love her so. My daddy too, they'll be proud to know. I died with a guitar in my hand. Playing the out of heart man. Oh, playing the out of heart man. Well, I looked down at that kid's face as I carried him off in a guitar case. And I promised myself right there and then I'll never play fast again. No, I'll never play fast again. Minnesota, my hometown, place I intend to go back to when all this is done. Little town up there in the exact geographical center of Minnesota, settled by Unitarian missionaries <laughs> who went out there in the Civil War years trying to convert the Ojibwe Indians through the use of interpretive dance. They went back to Boston, wrote books about it. They were followed into that site by Norwegian Lutherans who were on their way back from North Dakota. <laughs> and then by German Catholics who had misread their maps, but who <laughs> refused to admit it. And stayed there. Stayed there as if it was the place they had intended to be all along. Sort of the case with the Norwegians, too. They uh, arrived, and there's a point in town where there's a statue of the unknown Norwegian, <laughs> which uh, refers to the fact that the guy who modeled for it left before they got his name, but it marks the spot where the first Norwegian settlers arrived and they fell on their knees to thank God for bringing them to this place. And upon falling to their knees, they noticed that this place was kind of rocky. <laughs> but they stuck on. They stayed on and I don't know how. Some of those people back in the early days, they worked like animals and how they ever survived and kept some lightheartedness and some fun in life. Somehow they did. They were great people, our ancestors. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, meatballs, lovely meatballs. 
that grace our Sunday meals Another pen of meatballs Of beef and pork and veal Adorn a serving platter Upon a walnut stand We thank thee for these meatballs From thine and grandma's land O oh, lovely mashed potatoes In which these meatballs flow On great brown lakes of gravy Poured from the gravy boat It speaks to us of richness Of blessing and good cheer When spoken to by me, boss I love the words I hear Oh, spinach, peas and onions Oh, beets, beet greens and chard Fresh from Grandma's garden, beyond the cool green yard. Pools of green lie steaming in pale blue china bowls around a silver wedding vase of yellow marigolds. Oh, lovely sweet cream butter, oh, lovely bread we break that Grandma made this morning before I was awake. No recipe, no measure, but made with love and care. The smell of yeast and flour still lingers in the air. Oh, cousins, aunts, and uncles who share this earthly store, Gathered round this table in 1954 Eyes closed and hands are folded As Grandpa says the grace Mine alone are open I look in every face I see your lovely faces Together on this day Passing into darkness The voices fade away I close my eyes to hold you To bring you back to me Passing, slowly passing Into a memory Another Sunday dinner Another table set Children take the places Of folk they never met a little boy is sitting in Grandma's old oak chair. I feel his eyes upon me as I say the prayer. Around this Sunday table, time is passing by. Child, I know you see it In our faces, so do I But thank the Lord for giving us This afternoon again And now please pass the meatballs Let's eat, amen Welcome to you on behalf of all your friends in Lake Wobegon, Minnesota, which bring you this half hour, including the Chatterbox Cafe where Dorothy presides, the place to go that's just like home, where the soup of the day all month, this month, 
And summer next is the chicken soup made from real chicken, not made from powders, no sir. <laughs> also brought to you by the Sidetrack Tap, where Wally and Evelyn wait to welcome you, where the blue skirt waltz is still on the jukebox, where the lights are dim, where beer is still two bits and a bump is six, where the pinball machine never tilts and love never dies. Also brought to you by Bob's Bank, there in the little green mobile home on Main Street, save at the <laughs> sign of the sock. Well, it has been a quiet week in Lake Wobegon, Minnesota, the little town that time forgot, that the decades cannot improve. <laughs> the Hockstetter's dog died this last week, Rex. He was 14 years old, part spaniel, and about nine parts of something else. It was a dog who loved to chase cars. They bought him for a watchdog out there on the farm. But, you know, whenever a car would turn into the driveway, he'd kind of lose interest in it. He loved to chase them. And he'd lie out there on the grass out by the garden and watch for one to go down the county road. And as soon as it got a little bit of a head start, he'd start out on the diagonal to catch up with it. He'd cut across the garden and through the fence and down through the pasture and through the ditch, and he'd catch up with it, and he would follow it for about a quarter of a mile, depending on how fast it was going. They tried locking him in the house once, but that was a mistake. <laughs> he heard a car go by on the highway and went straight up against Mrs. Hockstetter's collection of state plates. Well, he chased his last car this last week. He set out on the diagonal, and he went across the garden and through the fence and across the pasture and down the ditch and up, and he followed it for a little ways, and he seemed to have a heart attack. And he just kind of gave a little leap in the air, and he rolled over a few times, and he was dead. Raleigh said it was how Rex would have wanted to go. <laughs> not, to, not to crawl under a porch someplace and be sick for weeks, but to die in action, as it were. <laughs> to die in the line of duty, with his paws on, you know. I always had a feeling about that dog that he had a dream, that he felt that someday he'd catch one. <laughs> he'd be able to catch a car and grab hold of it and wrestle it down into the ditch, <laughs> get the best of it. And of course, with the coming of compact cars, he probably was encouraged to <laughs> feel that he had a chance. It may seem like a useless way to spend your life, but it was his way, and it was his dream. And I think that dog knew something. I think he had the right idea. And that's the news from Lake Wobegon, Minnesota, where all the women are strong, and all the men are good-looking, and all the children are above average. Rest in peace to an old dog. Skies were blue, my eyes were too, when I lived in Lake Wobegon. Long ago, and now I know, joy was mine in my prairie home. Wheat fields in the month of May, wheat beside the long driveway. Now I buy a box of biscuits to remind me of my woebegone days. Folks were warm, home on the farm. Food was good, my clothes were mended. Then one day, cold and gray, I packed a grip and moved away. I looked back and shed a tear. 
to see it in the rearview mirror. I said I'd just be gone a couple months, and now it's almost twenty years. Oh, little town, I love the sound of water sprinklers in the evening. The siren tune at twelve o'clock noon, or twelve o four if Bud is late. And when you walk down Oak or Main, everybody knows your name. They ask you how you are. You say not bad. All right, I guess about the same. Woe be gone! I remember oh so well how peacefully among the woods and fields you lie. My woe be gone! I close my eyes and I can see you just as clearly. As in days gone by, it's not too far from wherever you are, and when you go, it never leaves you. You sit alone, and thoughts of home come and stand around your chair. What's their names? I knew back when. Never liked them that much then. But memory has been kind, and they weren't bad. I'd love to see those folks again. Oh, woe be gone. I remember oh so well how peacefully among the woods and fields you lie. My woe be gone. I close my eyes and I can see you just as clearly as in days. Gone by. I think about the Tollefson girl Tina, who moved down to the city. She came down here, went to college, married a boy who sat next to her in psychology class, to whom she always gave the answers. Gave him enough good ones so that he got into law school. Got on with a good law firm. They bought a nice house out by Lake Harriet in Minneapolis. Started having children. That was about 20 years ago, 20 some years ago. Some of the children already had grown up and moved out, just to have one left. So that when her mother wrote to her about two weeks ago and said, "Your uncle Ed has to come down for an operation." Monday next, but it would be more convenient for me if I could bring him down on Friday. Could you put up with him for a couple of days? She said, "Of course." So down he came. Her uncle Ed is one of what we call Norwegian bachelor farmers. <laughs> old old man lives in a two-room house. Just west of town, farms about 80 acres with the help of a couple of big black Belgian horses, named Queenie and Gus. Raises wheat mainly. Lives by himself. Keeps his place fairly neat, according to his own standards. <laughs> Keeps himself fairly clean, according to the same. <laughs> Splashes on a little winter green every week or so. Whenever he feels uncomfortable being with himself, he takes a bath. He came down on a Friday night, 
Never been to the city before. Tina opened the door, and there he was, her old Uncle Ed, dressed in a blue wool suit from about 40 years ago. He probably bought it, and I'll bet it was used then. He looked so frightened she couldn't help but put her arms around him, led him into the house, sat him down in the kitchen, got a little strong coffee in him, a little brandy. He felt a little better so that he could almost talk. <laughs> he said, well, then how are you, Tina? She said, I'm just fine, she said. How are you, she said. He's a little hard of hearing. You've got to speak up into his right ear. He said, I never felt better in my life. I don't know whose damn silly idea this was anyway. And that was about it for conversation. Norwegian bachelor farmers don't waste a lot of time talking. He was tired. She took him up to the bedroom, put him to bed, went up there the next morning, found that he had slept all night in the chair, said the bed was too big for him, he didn't want to mess up the covers. She brought him down, he sat down to breakfast, with her and her husband and the boy. Husband tried to ask him questions about farming with horses and about his boyhood and the rest of it. Uncle Ed didn't have much to say. Norwegian bachelor farmers do not necessarily answer when people ask them dumb questions. <laughs> Somebody wants to ask a dumb question, that's their business. Well, that must be sure interesting, Uncle Ed. Farming with those horses and all. And that wheat and everything. <laughs> Eighty acres, huh? Out west of town, huh? <laughs> yep. <laughs> After breakfast, she took him out and back in the yard in the chaise lounge. He sat down, put his head back, and he went to sleep. She sat there by him, just to have a look at him. Old, old man, big tangle of white hair on the top of his head, probably never been combed. Blue wool suit that he'd slept in, his old work boots on. No tie, but his white shirt buttoned right up to the top. That's formal for a Norwegian bachelor farmer. That's for when they go out, the button, the top button. <laughs> she took his hand in hers, big hand, and she remembered when she was four or five years old out at his farm, how he picked her up and sat her down on top of one of the big black Belgian horses, which for her was like somebody putting her up on top of a house. And he walked along beside as the horse walked around in the yard and he held on to her with his hand. And then later, sitting on the front of the hayrick, holding on to the rail, and he was standing there beside her. As the horses went trotting out across the yard and across the pasture and the harness, jingling, and they stopped at the fence, and he got off to open up the fence, and he put the reins in her hand, and he said, you hold them now, Tina. And she sat there, and she pulled back as hard as she could pull, and she said, whoa, <laughs> even though those horses wouldn't have taken a step <laughs> without his saying so. She was there, and she remembered all that. That was a long time ago. Well, she decided she'd take him out for a night on the town in a city he'd never seen. Her husband said, oh, I think he'd be a lot happier just staying here in the house with us. And she said, maybe so, but he's never seen the city before. And I would feel, if I kept him here, 
that maybe part of it was because I was ashamed to be seen with him. So we're going to take him downtown. And they got in the car. She sat in the back seat with Uncle Ed. They drove around the lakes. He was kind of curious about people running around the lakes. <laughs> what were they doing? She said, they're doing that for exercise, Uncle Ed. He said, that's kind of dumb, ain't it? Why don't they get work? Why don't they get jobs? <laughs> they went downtown. They took him to a restaurant at a hotel. They walked in, and the maitre d' looked at him, looked at this old man in the old suit with his work boots on, his hair not combed, looked at the well-dressed couple and their well-dressed son. Mater Day thought, well, that's their business. <laughs> he gave him a table back in the corner, back behind a palm tree. Uncle Ed is hard of hearing. When he talks, his voice carries all the way to the kitchen. <laughs> the waiter brought him a brandy, which he had asked for. Uncle Ed looked at it. He picked out the ice cubes. God damn, he said. Charge you two bucks for a drink, and then they water it down. He picked out the ice cubes. <laughs> Tina's husband was looking off at the ceiling. He was looking <laughs> off at the walls, as if he didn't know these people. They just come in. They've been seated at his table. He was not with them. This was not happening. The boy sat there grinning. <laughs> He'd never seen his dad so embarrassed. <laughs> he wanted to see more of it. <laughs> Tina, she sat by her uncle, and she talked. She carried on a monologue. And when people at other tables kind of snuck a stare over at them, she looked right back at them. She stared right back at them if there was nothing wrong. And when they got up, she went with him to the salad bar, and when he said, God damn, they sure give you small plates, don't they? <laughs> she said, yes, they do. <laughs> and when he heaped it all up with a macaroni salad, she paid no attention. And when the waiter brought him the broiled torsk with a sauce on it, and Uncle Ed took a bite of it. And he said, that's a hell of a shame to do that to a fish. <laughs> she just kept on talking. She just kept on talking about the family and all the people that she remembered from when she was young. And the people who come over from Norway and all about their history. Well, he went in for the operation on Monday. They let him out on Friday. The doctors said six months or a year. They didn't know how long. But then again, with somebody like Uncle Ed, there's no telling. They drove him home to the farm. The horses were there waiting for him. Queenie and Gus, they hadn't eaten all week. The horses they knew something was wrong. They'd been standing all week out behind the barn looking for him off down the road. The car came in the yard, and they saw he was in it, and they called to him. And he managed to walk over there and get out a couple ears of corn and a pail of oats and a fork full of hay and put it down for him. And he spoke to him in Norwegian, the only language those horses understand. And he told them that the city was a hellhole, but some of the people in it weren't bad. And he was glad to be back, and he was tired, and he was going to go in and lay down and take a nap. And tomorrow, they would go out and cultivate. And that's the news from Lake Wobegon, Minnesota, where all the women are strong. All the men are good looking. All the children be above average.
Just a couple of kids in the show business just trying to entertain you. We've been rehearsing this song since yesterday, doing the best we can do. But somehow it just doesn't seem to be working. Our careers are going nowhere. I used to think folks needed more time to like us. I'm starting to think they don't care. We've been on this road since we can remember. I must say, the future looks dim. She says it's me who's been holding us back. And I think the same about him. We stand up on stage every night and look happy. We go home and fight until dawn. Why can't we break up this that we fell in love? Why must the show go on? We can't get on TV in nightclubs or radio. Look at us and smile We're too old for rock and roll And too old for disco And popular just ain't our style Our last thousand dollars We spent on these costumes Now we're checking accounts overdrawn Why can't we break up this art we But I can't leave her I know how she needs me She never could make it alone And I promised his mama and daddy I'd love him and raise him as one of my own I guess that we just have to keep up appearances Till all our prospects are gone why can't we break up this that we've been living? Why must the show go on? Why can't we break up this that we've been living? Why must the show? portion of our show brought to you by Jack's Auto Repair of Lake Wobegon. All tracks lead to Jack's, where the bright flashing lights show you the way to complete satisfaction. And also by the Hotel Minnesota. Hotel Minnesota's waiting for you if you should travel to New York City, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, or Dallas. Make your home away from home, the Hotel Minnesota. It's the hotel at it's a friendly place to stay from the moment you arrive, and the whole staff is waiting out there on the front steps to say hello to you. <laughs> Hi, they say. How you been? <laughs> As they come out and open the door of your cab. Oh, not so bad, you say. How's yourself? <laughs> well, we can't complain, they say. <laughs> and into the hotel you go and into the big lobby there with the knotty pine paneling and the comfortable furniture and uh, all the graduation pictures in the gold frames around there on the tables. There's no registration desk because they already know who you are. <laughs> but you don't sit around there in the lobby. 
No, sir, nobody sits there. You all go back, sit around in the hotel kitchen, drink some coffee, <laughs> and catch up on the latest. <laughs> My, it's a lovely place. They've got activities for you from dawn till dusk, games of Monopoly and slideshows, trips to the zoo, whatever you want to do. <laughs> and when it's time to go up to your room, why, of course, all the bellhops are children, just like go and visit your sister. They're all children. Eight, nine, ten years old, they all say, Let me carry your bag, Uncle Ed. <laughs> and on up you go to the guest room, which is not an empty room like most hotel rooms, but it's a guest room such as we know from visiting our relatives, where there's a lot of stuff in storage. <laughs> old sewing machine and piles of National Geographics and <laughs> golf clubs in the closet and uh, lots of winter clothes hanging up there. <laughs> yes, sir. And there's no tipping at the Hotel Minnesota. Most hotels, when you go visit them, you have to arrive with a fistful of dollars and start distributing them as soon as you come in through the door. You don't do that at the Hotel Minnesota. When you come as a guest, you just bring along what guests have always brought along, either a hot dish or a dessert. <laughs> And that's what makes dining at the Hotel Minnesota such an adventure as well. It's different every day. So if the city gets to you, there's just one place to go to. It's the Hotel Minnesota. You drop in and see it sometime soon. thought that you loved Minnesota That Anoka was your happy home When we woke up this morning you had left us Oh Father dear why did you roam On the table you left us a letter We read it with tears in our hearts it said, please forgive me for leaving, but I feel I must make a new start. I am going to live in Orlando, where I can be warm all the year. But when I die, bring my body back to lie in the prairie so dear. In the bedroom, we found all your warm clothing. A hymn book, the bed, and a rug. And a pile of the National Geographic. And a picture of the ones whom you love. Oh, Papa, your children are crying. For without you, we won't have a home. We want you to come back to Anoka And so we have written this poem Our green fields are barren and empty The barnyard is lonely and still In the woods all the birds are silent Since our father went over the hill Oh, we thought that you loved Minnesota That Anoka was your happy home When we woke up this morning you had left us Oh, Father, dear, why did you roam? Margaret Haskins Derber, who is the poet laureate of Lake Wobegon, had a poem in this week's edition of the Lake Wobegon Herald Star, Thursday on page three, which we read from time to time on the show, her new poems, by permission of the editor, Harold Starr. This is entitled, 
uh, a poem for my children on the subject of obedience. <laughs> there was a boy whose name was Jim, and although life was good to him and gave him food and home and love, he thought that it was not enough, that it was time for him to do those things that he'd been told not to. I am half grown and must be free to do those things denied to me, and I shall do them all, he said. I'll spread some black dirt on my bread and drop large objects on my toes, and I shall put beans up my nose. <laughs> and everything that as a kid his mom said don't, he went and did. He crossed his eyes and dragged his feet, threw bags of garbage in the street, <laughs> leaned out windows, ran down halls, spilled on floors, and wrote on walls. Until at last, at half past two, he could not think of more to do. All things forbidden he had done, and nothing had been so much fun as he'd imagined when he started. He sat there, weary and downhearted. How dull, he said. I must admit it. I fear my sins are all committed. My wild oats have all been rolled. I've saved up none for when I'm old. If in the future I should fall, there'll be no thrill in that at all. I've committed anger, pride, and lust. I've drank and smoked and lied and cussed. The things my mom and dad condemn, I finished up by 2 p.m. <laughs> Everything that was not right, now what is left to do tonight? From this, dear children, you should sense the value of obedience. I tell you don't, I mean postpone some naughtiness for when you're grown. Save up some mischief and rampages. You'll enjoy them more at later ages. <laughs> and so, dear children, please, less noise. It's 8 o'clock. Pick up your toys, brush your teeth, and off to bed. But after all your prayers are said, the lights are out, you're quiet as mice, whisper one word that isn't nice. <laughs> don't say ten, don't say a group, just say one, like... Oh, what a pleasure from one bad word. Say it a second time and third. A terrible word, profane and vicious. How bad of you and how delicious. <laughs> one is enough. The rest will keep. Now close your eyes and go to sleep. I'm on my way, I'll be in shape and ready to play by the end of August, if not in May, it's Wobegon Whip, it's Ray. When you're dressed in a nice clean uniform and you're loosened up and your arm is warm and you drop the ball going round the horn, that's Wobegon Whip, it's Ray. Well, here's how you do the whip, it's rag, there's a high pop fly, you just can't shag, throw to second and miss the tag, over to first, take your foot off the bag. Well, it sure is lonely, here and right. It's a long way to walk and the sun's too bright. Sure, I'm glad this will be my last year. I wish somebody would send out a beer. Here's the wind up and here's the pitch. It's a fly to right, son of a gun. Can't let it drop or another man scores. It's mine, I got it. No, it's yours. That makes score 20 to 2. I'm sorry, coach, I had a stone in my shoe. Why are they yelling? Why did they boo? Yeah, buddy, well, the same to you. I do my best, but it ain't enough. It seems like I done lost my stuff. How can a fellow concentrate with that woman and the bleachers behind home plate? I wonder what she's doing after the game. I wonder if anybody knows her name. If I got her name, I'd give her a call. Oh, for goodness sake, here comes the ball. The, um... Lake Wobegon Whippets begin their season one week from tomorrow on Memorial Day, the 30th of May. They will begin. The Wally Old Hard Hands Bunsen Memorial Park has gotten a fresh coat of green paint there. Bud has been working down at the park and also put in some new chicken wire on the screen on the grandstand right behind home plate where some of the Whippet fans last year, you know, sometimes they get a little bored watching the game and 
they uh, start fooling with the wire and unraveling it. And uh, late August here, one of the players' dads uh, fell asleep and sort of pitched forward and went right through it onto the field. So that's all been fixed up. As for the whippets, saw Ernie, the old knuckleballer. He was down in the sidetrack with his catcher, Roy. They were practicing their signals, of which there's only one. <laughs> Two fingers means a knuckleball. <laughs> down to the sidetrack, it also means a, a beer and a shot. <laughs> Either way, they get hit pretty hard, I'll tell you. <laughs> they were down there for a long time. Ernie finally had to be pulled in about the 11th inning, <laughs> taken home by his brother. So we look forward to the season against the Albany Allgemeinschaft at the Wally Old Hard Hands Bunsen <laughs> Memorial Park next Saturday. We'll hope to bring you a score. This portion of our show was brought to you by Ahua, the Swedish hot sauce made from those little yellow pino peppers. Oh, to make your make your mouth open and your eyes water and your whole cardiovascular system stand up and holler. You bet they do. You know, there comes a time in life when a person tends to become blasé and bored and tired of life. I'd say right around 15, 16 years old. You feel like you've done it all. You've seen all there was to see or everything that they would let you see. And life just seems absurd and to have no further meaning or pleasure for you. Well, kiddos, that's the time when you ought to reach for a big red bottle of Ahua hot sauce. Ahua has a lot of lessons to teach us, Mr. Lieberman. You know, you've heard people say this, so have I. Say, no, no, dear, we weren't married on a Saturday. It was on a Sunday. It was on a Saturday we had the Ahua. I remember it was... On December 31st, 1973, that I broke my right leg. I put a little ahua on it to take my mind off it, and we danced for several more hours. <laughs> so, kiddos, get the big red bottle of ahua hot sauce. Put it on your burgers, put it in the pizza sauce when the gang comes over for the slumber party. And you'll stay up all night. <laughs> Woo! Let me hear you say it. Ahua! Ahua! Oh, give me some of that ahua guitar there, Swedish style. I'm a good eater, yeah, you betcha. I sure do like that red hot ketchup. It don't just sit, it comes and gets you. It's a heck of a deal. Ahua! Oh my, we're having a good time. The trees are so bare in November So bare The sky is so dismal and gray Dismal Thank goodness for hot Szechuan cooking Thank goodness To keep the soul alive and the blues away I want some hot curry chicken and the jumbo guy ding The mooshy pork that makes a sad man sing I want the Shanghai ginger, give it extra spice And the Kung Pao chicken and the shrimp fried rice I know your chef is cautious, he don't want to be sued I may be Caucasian, but I need the food I've been living on burgers, I need the relief I want the hoo, 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 Hunan beef The flowers are dead in November So dead The sweet prairie grasses are brown So brown Thank goodness for Mexican cooking Thank goodness To keep your head in the clouds And your feet on the ground 
Bring me your hot pepper sauce and some corn tortillas, enchiladas, chimichangas, quesadillas, a glass of tequila and a bowl of mesquite. Don't bring me the mild stuff, I need the heat. I know your chef's afraid cause I'm a gringo guy. He thinks I'll bite one chili and lay down and die. I'll pay for the insurance, I don't mind the cost. I want some ha, 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 jalapeno sauce. I don't mind burgers or meatloaf. I don't mind. And broccoli's fine in its place. In its place. But when it comes down to November, comes down. I need some food that puts a smile on my face. We'll take a walk after dinner, help the food digest, and visit our friends and let them smell our breaths. Hi, we'll say, we hope you both feel fine. The food gives pleasure for a second time. Hi.